Welcome back. We are about to proceed with Yelan's story quest, I believe. Um, walking around Leoa Harbor. It is the next banner as well as I think. Yeah. We have the Summertide Scales. It's a full on new version, isn't it? Uh, scales and Tails. Um, now, as I understand it, this hasn't fully released all the parts yet. And thankfully, there are still 37 days, so no rush, no rush. I, so I can wait to find out if there are any spoilers. As I understand it, there are none so far. What are you doing back there, Scaramouche? Very cool. So we'll, we'll do that when the time comes, assuming it's safe to do. And... Okay, we have Navia and Nilo for banner number one, as well as Kirara. Oh, Kave, uh, wait, no, you're not new. I'm pretty sure we've seen you once in the past. Don't think I'm misremembering. And Ningguang. Now, here's the th thing of envisage uh, envisaged echoes okay well i haven't successfully unlocked act six yet or completed it i've only managed to get up to act five um but now yeah here's the thing i have in my hands a guarantee straight up i'm honestly not sure if i want to use it for one of you if I was going to use it for one of you, it would almost certainly be for Nilo, I think. I vaguely remember liking her style. Well, what was the... Who was the... Yeah, there it is. Uh, Emily. Or Emilie. Um, I might just wait for... Banner number two. To uh, wish for someone. Hmm... Oh, this is one of the limited time areas, right? Because this is a uh, the <laughs> preparing for the next uh, the next uh, region, right? Yeah, like the archipelago or the uh, the bottle world. Okay, so this should be fully released. Well, I guess not the appendix. Um, the pages are fully released as of now, I think. And then the appendix will be released in a couple of days. Very cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. She has a beautiful new outfit. Good old Nilo. Yeah, okay. She was um, somewhere between, I guess, a main or a sub DPS or a support. It's hard to really say because really she is a, uh, a Bloom team. Uh, she excels at that, I think. Um, I'm honestly, uh, I, 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 I think I, I, I might save my wishes, though, as much as I might like Nilo. I don't know, how many Kiraras do I have? Yeah, I have one Kirara. Uh, I don't think I have any Kaves. Uh, yeah, I've already gotten Ningguang. And honestly, I don't remember any of these three being especially good four stars anyways. I, mm, yeah. Well, we'll hold off. We'll definitely hold off. All right. Traveler, Paimon, it's been a long time. It's not been that long, Quishin. I mean, I get it. I've, between when I would have last seen you and uh, when this actually happened. I've been in Inazuma for so long, but... Oh! Hey, Hoshin! Long time to see! Fancy meeting you here. How's work these days? Hopefully, uh, not too bad. Thanks to the help of people like you and colleagues like Ganyu, <laughs> better all the time. Ganyu's getting rest, proper rest, you know, not carrying the entirety of the Shishing on her back. But... 
I've been feeling distracted at work lately. I just feel constantly agitated. It... Why? What's wrong? Something happened? <sighs> it's a long story. But my father, he's thinking of stepping down from the Tianshu position due to health issues. Oh. Huh. I mean, he is a little old, is he not? Huh? What's wrong with Uncle Tian? Nothing specifically. He's not unwell. He says he's just increasingly low on energy these days. I mean, it happens. It's okay. He's always said, old age comes for us all in the end. <sighs> Still, I just can't help but feel a little emotional watching it happen to him. Right. Understandable. Anyway, my father's currently on the second floor of Yangsheng Tea House. Why don't you come pay him a visit with me? Of course, of course. We'll get some tea. We'll catch up with Uncle Tian. And you. He seems very fond of you, too. <laughs> I'm sure chatting with you will make him very happy. I hope so. Sure, let's go. Calculated gambit. <laughs> All right. Uh, this way. Uncle Tian, there you are. The Tian Shu. Yeah, well, want some tea? Oh? I guess you're already getting tea. <laughs> what a lovely surprise. Welcome. Oishi, why don't you go downstairs and get the shopkeeper to make us a fresh pot of tea? Yes. That sounds like, that sounds lovely. But do join us after that. I heard that you've been traveling all over the place recently. I would very much like to hear your adventure stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have. We've done a lot of traveling, Uncle Tian. But we're more concerned about your health. Are you okay? Hoishin told you, didn't she? She did. Don't worry. I'm quite all right. It's just the years gradually catching up with me. Sure. Nothing urgent. Right. Just, you know, retirement. Uh, as I grow older, I'm starting to find that with many things, though the mind is willing, the flesh is weak. <laughs> Especially recently, I've noticed a rather drastic drop in my energy levels. Right. Well, I guess it happens. I am still very much in good standing as the Tianshu today. Nevertheless... I wish to pass on the position before my mental acuity begins to decline beyond redemption. Sure, sure. How difficult is it to transfer the Tianshu position? That is a good question. I mean, I'm not really positive on what its duties are. Exactly, I just know it's kind of high up. Oh, well, you see, the Tianshu is a rather unique position among the Liyue Qixing. Yeah. You Historically tell. speaking, the Tianshu rarely appears in public. We stay behind the scenes, planning and giving advice. So a public selection process would not be suitable. Sure, sure. It's a uh you know well, you said it yourself. It's a it's a private affair, it's a private position. We also want to keep any prospective Tianshu candidates free from influence by outside forces. So we tend to be as smart. discreet as possible in their assessment and appointment. For these reasons, the incumbent Tianshu typically recommends their candidate of choice. And this is then approved by the other Qixing members. Right. So in other words, you pick someone and then Lady Kuching, Lady Ningguang, and the other Qixing appoint them? It sounds like it. Yeah. Correct. Unfortunately, due to my health, I won't be able to assess every candidate myself. Hmm. Are you sure it's just low energy that's the problem? You said your health just now. 
Consider that separate from your energy levels, though. Not to despair, however, because I found someone exceptionally capable to act on my behalf oh. as assessment officer. Yelin. <laughs> In fact, I believe you recently became acquainted with her yourself. <laughs> Quite recently, in fact, yes. Oh? Who is it? Hey, Yalen. I'm heartbroken. I thought it might take you a little longer than this to forget all about me. <laughs> Never. It's Yalen! Yeah, good to see you again already. <laughs> Jackpot. Uncle Tian here asked me to assess three candidates for him. Fancy joining me? You'll be among the first to get to know the next Tian Shu. Might be a good opportunity for you. I I guess. I mean, I, I mean I like Uncle Tian just fine. I'm not sure if I really need the political influence of knowing the next Tian Shu personally, but hey, I won't turn it down. Hmm. What do you think? It's a good opportunity. I'm not really interested. <laughs> no, nah, no. I don't want to upset Uncle Tian and Yalen like that. It's a good opportunity. Paimon thinks so too. It can't be a bad thing to be on good terms with the new Qixing, right? Yeah. So long as, you know, I'm not secretly one of their candidates. All right then. Which, certainly not. I'm not from Liyue. Though, I gotta say, Uncle Tian, you say you're into behind the scenes planning? My work's of the covert variety, too. <laughs> yes, it is. Don't you think I might make a good Tian Shu? I, you know, I will be honest, Yalen. At first, your name did pop up in my head as a prime candidate. Huh? Yalen, you want to be the next Tian Shu? I'm not opposed to the idea, but I suspect Ningguang wouldn't let you go very easily <laughs> after how long you've been working together. Yeah. She's very valuable in her current position. So, how about this? If your investigation reveals that none of the other candidates are qualified for the position, I'll recommend you for the job. I mean, that's well and good. Though, you do realize since she's the yeah, assessing the other candidates, she could very well give them unfair assessments and push herself to the top of the list if she really wanted to. Of course, that could be a test of yours. Seeing if she does or doesn't do that. Deal. Well, you guys take your time. Everything's all set for the assessments to go ahead. Or maybe he just tr he trusts her integrity. That's a possibility. Meet me on the first floor when you're ready. Until then, have a pleasant conversation. Thank you, Yalen. We won't, we won't be too long. Still waiting on that tea, though. Oh, and no need to pay for your tea. As the new owner of this oh, establishment, this runs on the house. You own this tea house? Galen. Damn. You're How did all that set? happen? I, I, I guess so, yeah. Tell me more about you owning this tea house, though. Uncle Tian seems really worn down. It's like all his energy's gone. Paimon, he's old. This is what happens. It's, it's perfectly normal. It doesn't mean he's dying. It just, you know, means he's old. Yeah, it may sound harsh, but Uncle Tian is past his prime. He's not cut out for this anymore. Yeah. So he's recommended three candidates. Their names are Chen Wei, Ming Guo, and Zhe Yi. And I assume these are people who are already relatively high ranking... Uh, Jingxia members? Qin Wei is a wealthy entrepreneur. Ming Bua works at the Liu Wei Ministry of Civil Affairs, and Zhe mm. Yi is focused on study and travel. Never mind. Only one of them even sounds like the... Or the... Uh, what did I say? The Qi Xing. Um, it sounds like only Ming Bo works for the Qi Xing. Try to keep all that in mind. <laughs> of course, it doesn't really matter if you forget, since we'll be assessing them at Yuehai Pavilion in a short while. Huh. Very surprised that they don't have to be, you know, effectively high-ranking bureaucrats at this point. Qianwei, Mingbo, Yi. Paimon should be able to remember their names, but what does the assessment involve exactly? 
Good question, Paimon. And, uh, well, I'll recognize them, but I won't be able to remember them off the top of my head, I don't think. Well, let's leave that until we get to your high pavilion. Is it a surprise? All right. Heads in the game, people. The stakes don't get much higher than a change in the Qixing. We can't afford to miss anything, no matter how small. Fair enough, yeah. Got it. We'll keep our eyes wide open. All right. Off to the Yuhai Pavilion. All right. My legs are getting sore. What is wrong with this assessment officer? This uh, is a huge occasion, and I don't even get a chair. Yeah, let's, you know, write you off right off the bat. That attitude will do no good. I've dealt with all kinds of people in my time, but never have I been made to stand while I'm waiting for an appointment. Yeah, if you're gonna bitch and moan about that, you don't deserve a position like this. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I think it's fine. Though you also shouldn't be too pu much of a pushover either. That's called being complacent. If you're happy to just accept the way things are, you'll never be able to change anything in the future. Yeah, but if also if you're a little bitch, then, uh... I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh on you. I don't like that attitude, though. Oh, come on. That's just... Now you're just being unreasonable. All right, you two. Let's not get into a big argument over this. It's not worth it. Yeah, see, that's the proper attitude right there. I like you. You're you're good. Qianwei, that was a bit uncalled for. And Mingbo cut him some slack. We've all been standing around for a while. It's natural to be getting irritable. <laughs> yes, uh, that means uh, you are... Uh, what was it? Jua? Look, how about this? There's no rule saying we're obliged to stand up while we wait, so why don't we borrow some chairs from the guild nearby? There you go, or just sit on the ground or against the tree or something. Fine. Ugh, they're not the best quality chairs, to be sure. But under the circumstances, oh, it would God. be better yeah, than no. nothing. Yeah, no, screw you. <laughs> Complaining about the quality of the chair. Oh, no, I don't like you at all. Xianwei. Enter the assessment venue with Yalen. It looks like all three candidates have arrived. Oh, it was those three. Yeah, only one of them I think is maybe suitable for the position. Too much of a d uh, yeah, opposite ends of uh, not suitable, but just right. Oh, it was those three. Mm -hmm. We'll meet them formally soon. Before that, let me run you through the assessment process. I've split it into two stages. Current affairs and planning, and face-to-face -face interview. Okay. In the first stage, candidates are required to submit a manifesto for Liyue's development. In the second stage, we will ask them some questions in person. Mm, sounds good. Writing a manifesto takes time, so I informed them of this requirement in advance. So they know who you These are. are. the reports they submitted. Oh, wow. I notice, uh... One is much more comprehensive. That can be a good thing or cannot, you know. Wow. One of them is really thick. Yeah, thick doesn't necessarily mean better, though, Paimon. It, you know, it could be that they are more thorough and detailed, which might be nice. It could also mean that, uh, well, it's just a whole bunch of uh, fluff. It's also worth mentioning a stipulation I gave them. Whoever is appointed as the new Tianshu will be expected to implement their plan as put forward in their manifesto. So more... well... More detail or less detail might be better. Give you a little more wiggle room to, uh... Adapt to, you know, unforeseen circumstances or... You know, whenever you take a position like that... Yeah. No matter what you think, things will be, the reality will be a little different, so you have to be careful what you plan for. Failing the occurrence of some cataclysmic event, they will not be permitted to change their plan. Hmm. Therefore, these three piles of documents in front of us represent where each candidate stands on key policy issues. 
I see, I see. Are they actually not able to change? I mean, I feel like once they become the Tian Chu, they probably would be able to. I mean, maybe it's not that powerful of a position. Maybe just a very, um, you know, respectable position. There's still some time. Have a skim through. Get a first impression of what each person's proposing. Of course, of course. I'll be waiting off to the side. Just let me know when you're done. Of course. I, I want to make the those three wait even longer. Um, it's one of them very specifically. Oh, yeah, they got the chairs now. Yeah, see. Look at this. These chairs are perfectly fine. Oh, are you mad they don't have cushions or something, uh, Chien Wei? By the way, do you have any idea who the assessment officer is this time? Um, I'm not sure. Me neither. They'd better get someone who knows what they're talking about, though. I don't want some amateur trying to decide my fate. I really don't like you. Terrible attitude. Hmm, this rubs me the wrong way. Alright, let me, uh... Oh, let me talk to Yalen first. Finished? No. Almost. Oh, come on, we haven't even started yet. We are not almost finished. <laughs> um, all right, let's start with uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Docile here. Mingo's or Mingbo's manifesto covers domestic affairs quite comprehensively. Focusing on people's livelihoods. The core principle seems to be the greater good means a world that works for everyone. I mean, I appreciate that. Can they achieve it, though? Mr. Asshole. Chin Wei's manifesto addresses many commercial issues and provides some very penetrating analysis. His view seems to be that regulations and incentives are both indispensable. I mean, some truth to that. But what about uh, G, uh, G's? G, yeah. Um, His manifesto covers domestic affairs, foreign affairs, and checks and balances all in great detail. The focus seems to be problem solving. It provides concise and clear solutions to various problems. Yeah, he's definitely... The more, uh, he, he must be the, uh, Ministry of Civil Affairs guys, right? He, he's gotta be. It's so thick that you only have time to skim through it, roughly. Okay, yeah, his was the thick one. Finished, huh? What did you think? I mean, each one probably has st strengths and weaknesses. I can't really judge them without reading through them Truly, but everyone took it very seriously. Like, yes, they they focus on those things, but whether they, I think they'd be successful at implementing their their vision based off of these manifestos is harder to say. Of course they did. They have the chance to be picked as the new Tian Shu, so you can bet they're putting their best foot forward. Okay, if that's that one guy's best foot forward, I'd hate to see him on an average day. And keep in mind, whoever gets in has to execute their plan as written. Nobody wants to have any regrets. Right. Well, what did you think, Yelin? <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. We can talk more after the interviews. Of course. We'll see the candidates now. Let's do one at a time. Start with Chen Wei. Oh, God. Yes, ma'am. Save the worst for first. Oh, so you two are the assessment officers, are you? Yes, we are. And if you would like to be as, uh, considered for this position, you better address us with, uh, you know, not so much of a chip on your shoulder. I had assumed that given the great import of this situation, Lady Ningguang would perhaps be <laughs> assessing us in person. I certainly hadn't imagined I'd be seeing two entirely unfamiliar faces. You think Lady Ningguang has time for the likes of you, Chienwei? You have a bit, way too much of a chip on your shoulder. 
See if we can't knock it down a peg. Or two. Or ten. Yeah. It just so happens we are trusted by the uh, prior Tian Shu, and, uh, well. I trust you've read through my manifesto. I'd be more than happy to clarify any details you found difficult to grasp. It was written with an expert audience in mind, after all. I hate this man so much. But actually, you see, that's a problem, Chinwei. I mean, you should uh, know your audience and uh, write to them. Mind your toe, mister! <laughs> Thank you, Paimon. Relax. It wasn't intended as a personal slight against anyone in particular. I was simply stating a fact. Did you learn the, your communication skills? Do you learn them from Cloud Retainer? <laughs> no, Cloud Retainer is better than this. She has problems with communication, but she's not that bad. <laughs> this guy's on another level of uh, arrogance. Cloud Retainer? You know this Adeptus? Oh, yes, I remember now. You must be the traveler that people are constantly talking about. I didn't, I mean, I guess I knew people were constantly talking about me, but yeah, I assure you I'm nothing special. With your sterling reputation, you must have a respectable level of erudition. Perhaps you will be able to understand the concepts I have put forward. Yeah, although I shouldn't get my hopes up. No, you really shouldn't. You really shouldn't. Not for the reasons you think. But, uh... Ying Ling. Oh! <laughs> ah, Mingbo. Is it my turn? Yes, it is, Mingbo. Yes. Please, introduce yourself. I'm, uh... Mingbo. Oh! I work in the Ministry of Civil Affairs. You're the Ministry of Civil Affairs guy. Huh. I've worked there for, um, nine years, five months, and three days. In that time, I've handled, uh, 2,347 cases. Why do you know that off the top of your head? To that level of precision. I have 12 active cases at the moment. They should be concluded in, uh, 16 days? I, you're, you're all right, Mingbo, as a person, but... You are much too timid for a position like this. My current work is related to urban planning, and I'm also responsible for uh, auditing the accounts. To be more precise, there are three parts to the accounts, namely... Uh, is it just Paimon, or is he not very good at public speaking? No, he is way too nervous. You know what? Let's leave the self-introduction there and move on to some questions. Thank you, Galen. That was awkward. Oh, okay. Sorry. Forces her way through a few questions, then gets him to fetch G. Hello. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little nervous. Hey, it's understandable. What would you like to know? You're here to assess me, so ask away and I'll answer your questions to the best of my ability. See, this is a great balance. Humble, but uh, not dying of nervousness. Your manifesto is very wide in its scope but you don't seem to be personally involved in many of the specific fields. How can you be sure that you have the ability to put your plan into action? That's a fair question. Very blunt, but very fair. Very fair question. Yeah, I exactly. I understand where you're coming from. Do tell. But I'm confident in my plan. I've visited many different places, talked to lots of people with far more expertise than myself. Yes! And my manifesto is the conclusion of these efforts. I imagine you got your hat from, uh, visiting Fontaine? Um, no, this is this guy. He, this is the guy. Talked to lots of people with far more expertise than myself. And then listened to the... I like you, G. I like you a lot. Of course, two different problems can be interconnected in very complicated ways. And you right. might reach two very contradictory conclusions depending on which one you're focusing on. Very true. What I've tried to do is strike a balance. In other words, present an optimal solution to all the problems as a whole. Very ambitious. How do you plan to determine whether you are right or wrong about your proposed solution being the optimal one? I mean, you can never be fully sure, but you can 
measure those kind, you know, the outcomes in certain ways? A great question. Well, I'd start by having my colleagues and the secretaries of the UA High Pavilion evaluate any proposals before implementation. Right. Post implementation, it would all come down to the results. It, I love you. You are my man. If it turned out that my judgment was to blame for poor results, I would take responsibility. <laughs> nice answer. All right, next question. He is so very clearly the best candidate by far. It's not even close. It was uh, clear to he me like a great guy. just from Everything the... Everything he said was thoughtful and logical, and he was just a pleasure to listen to. He was, he was. Yeah, no, from the very uh, moment we uh, we met him, or, you know, her first heard the three talking, I thought he would be the best for this position. <laughs> Meh. I agree. Here's my take on what we just learned. You don't like all three of them? As you saw, Chen Wei is highly knowledgeable. He proposes many excellent ideas in his manifesto, which effectively target the big issues. I guess, but I don't think he has the temperament for a position like this at all. But he is very proud and incredibly stubborn. He doesn't care much about other people's feelings. Which is a major problem for a position like this. He doesn't have the ability to acknowledge that he might be conceivably wrong. Ningbo's plan is more thorough and more measured. You can tell he's meticulous in his work, very detail-oriented. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I noticed that. But he and Chen Wei are otherwise polar opposites. Mingbo is not very articulate and comes across as very timid in conversation. Right. Perfect summary. Paimon couldn't agree more. You're good at this, Yuan. She is. But I'm waiting for that shoe to drop. Despite how good of a candidate uh, Jia seems to us, I think Yelin probably has a criticism. Last but not least, Jur E. His oh, manifesto Jur -E. is full yeah. of pertinent details, his methodology is sound. And his proposals cover a broad range of fields, which is quite a rare feat. Yes. The depth he goes into in each and every area means it can only be a product of painstaking work. Plus, he is modest and good at dealing with people. Yeah, I agree. But what really interests me is that many of his views happen to coincide with Uncle really? Tien's. Having someone like Jur E take the position would certainly put Uncle Tien's mind at rest. Huh. Well, I was actually expecting a criticism. I just felt like that. Like there would be it was just the look on your face when you were there. I was sort of expecting that twist, but no. Great. We'll see. Let's go back and report to Uncle Tien. I mean, do you think he's faking something or? I mean, I, like I said, as far as I can tell, he's the only candidate as of now. Whether he is a suitable or not. The other two definitely aren't. Uncle Tien? Was the position of Tian Shu named after you? Or were you named after the position? <coughs> I see. Then it's more or less as I anticipated. Oh, so you were, uh, I guess you did recommend these three, right? So you would be familiar with the candidates. All right. Then let me ask this. The ideas in Jur E's manifesto are very similar to your own. Is there any particular reason behind this? Hmm. Oh. I didn't want to say anything when I gave you the list. <laughs> what did you do? For fear of affecting your judgment. <laughs> but I can tell you now. Is he like your personal uh, protege or something? Those three candidates? have all studied under me ah. in the past. It's only natural that they share some similarities with me. Well, one of them does, at least. But Xin Wei went on to focus on his business, and Ming Guo has always been occupied with his work at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Of all of them, Jiri was with me for Jiri. the longest duration. Hmm. You get to know them all, Uncle Tian. I mean, yeah, it means he's if he studied studied under you the longest, he probably is the uh the best candidate for taking over the position. Chen Wei was referred to me by an old friend, 
Ming Wu came to my attention in the course of my work. <laughs> As for Jerry, <laughs> I was pure happenstance. <laughs> We first met while fishing. Really? Gradually, as we got to know each other, we started discussing all sorts of topics. So he has wide range of interests. Jury came from a poor family, and his parents died when he was very young. But he was a gifted student and a fast learner. Man, everything I hear about this guy, I like him more and more. He reminded me of a younger version of myself. So... I started out giving him a few words of advice when we were out fishing and noticed how quickly he got on. Yeah, he sounds almost like family to you. Quite. And now, all of a sudden, he's grown into a mature young <laughs> man. Yeah. It's a joy to see. But it also gets one thinking. About? The young are growing up and I am growing old. How time flies. Mm. No one can escape the cycle of life. So true, Uncle Tian. So true. I don't know, Uncle Tian. You still seem in pretty good shape to me. You might have another few years of work left in you, don't you think? I mean, even if he does, it still might be time to pass the torch. Maybe he wants to uh, enjoy his life just now, you know. There's nothing wrong with retirement. Oh, you. <laughs> There's really no need to console me. Having less energy than I used to isn't a, such a bad thing. It just means I finally have a good reason to retire. And yeah. Spend my days doing what old men like <laughs> yes. should be doing. <laughs> fishing. Going fishing whenever I feel like it. Yeah, I know you'd like that. Like you sure love fishing, Uncle Tian. Oh, fishing is fun, Paimon. Just sitting on a pier or on a, on a boat on a lake. It's a quiet morning or evening. Ooh, there's nothing quite like fishing to pass the time. <laughs> Ooh, and freshly caught fish? Mm. Duh, they make the most beautiful fish soup with barely any preparation required. They, they do. Uh, even if you don't catch anything, though. It's still just fun to sit out on the boat. Fresh fish soup. Mmm, sounds tasty. <laughs> yes, it does, Paimon. Doesn't it? Also, some time ago, Jury purchased a very special recipe from an old fisherman. Really? For a fish soup? When we've been fishing recently... Jury always brings some extra ingredients he prepared in advance. Aww. Oh, the addition of these makes the soup taste even more wonderful. That's lovely. I like this guy. That flavor makes Jury. for a fond memory. But at my age, who knows how many more chances I have left to taste it again. Well, you'll just need to uh, make the most of the time you have left and... Eat it every single day. Very many chances, I'm sure. Oh, can Paimon come next time too? <laughs> Paimon Paimon. really wants to try it. I mean, we, we do a, we we go fishing sometimes. Yeah, let's go with the uh, let's go with Uncle Tian and Jury. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Uncle Tian, we've reported back. Do you have a verdict? Mm-hmm. I appointed you as the assessment officer, and I trust your judgment. Yeah, and I think she did a good job of being fair in her assessment. Had you not asked me why Jury's ideas were so similar to mine, I was not going to mention my history with any of them. This decision must be guided by what is fair and right. Please disregard all other considerations right. and make your final decision. Only after a thorough review of each candidate's talents and capabilities. I mean, it is very clear to me only one of them is even remotely suitable for the position. The other two might have technical know-how, but they just they are lacking far too much in uh the temperament to have a position like this cuz uh, fundamentally this is a policy-making position. You're going to have to deal with a lot of other people. And being too abrasive or too timid is not a good 
a good way to be in a position like this. Remember, you must be thorough. Sure. Understood. Yeah, I'm sure there's other things we can do to make sure Juri is a good candidate. Come on, let's go talk somewhere else. Of course, of course. Bye bye, Uncle Tim. Look after yourself. Yes, just enjoy the tea and the fish. As far as I'm concerned, any other choice would be insane, but... His manifesto was written well, and he's the best speaker. Anything else you'd like to probe him about to make sure he's okay? Easy. Let's not rush. There's no time limit for this assessment. Well, there's one time limit. A little dark to say, but you get my meaning. Huh? So, are you gonna give them more tests or something? No, nothing like that. The assessment itself is complete. Hmm. But let me give you a word of advice. Things are not always as they appear. You're gonna follow them and stake them out to see what they're really like? The biggest no-no in intelligence work is to only get information from the person of interest yeah. themselves. The truth is almost always hidden beneath many layers of deception. You have to get information through many different channels. That's fair. I did, I think I mentioned earlier that yeah, he could be, you know, faking things, putting on a front. Uh, I'd prefer not to assume that about him, but, you know, it's a possibility. For example, Wen Yuan, Shanghua. You have, like, ninjas? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, we just had that experience with Ayato recently. <laughs> Lady Yelan, what are your orders? Ugh! Who are they? Where did they come from? They've been there the entire time, Paimon. Did they scare you? These two are Wenyan and Shanghua. They work for me. Of course, of course. As my trusted assistants, they are always standing guard nearby. Mm. They also perform various assignments as required. Shanghua is a business expert who gets his information by trading. Wenyan relies on word of mouth. And there's also Wu Pei, who's not here right now. Wu Pei or Wu Pei? That meathead must have been out there on sea surveillance for some time now. <laughs> Is he all right? I seem to remember that he can't swim. <laughs> and he's on sea surveillance? <sighs> Nothing can take that guy down. Certainly not a little wind and waves. What about drowning? Shenghua, visit all the commerce guilds and look into Qianwei's background. Wen Yuan, go to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and look through Mingbo's work files. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Jiri. I guess we'll look into him personally. Jiri. Well, obviously, as the most promising candidate, we will be investigating him ourselves. <laughs> you know, having the head of the, well, the Ministry of Quote Unquote Civil Affairs, uh, the Intelligence Ministry, yeah, having them be the uh, ones in charge of this investigation, it makes a lot of sense, actually. A nice background check. Let's go to the docks first. Lots of people passing through there. You can find out all kinds of things. <laughs> if we're looking for information, why don't we try talking to Borai, the owner of Wanyu Boutique? Does he have a connection to, uh, Juri? He does business at the North Wharf. Maybe he has some news for us. I suppose, maybe. Hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's go and ask him. Sure. Why not? Huh? What was that? Look, your asking price for this Umbola. batch is just too high. I can't buy in at this price. How am I supposed to turn a profit? A bit of haggling here. Got some leeks or some spring onions and some garlic. Come on, hear me out. I'm telling you. This is the single best batch of Sensetias <laughs> ever. Mm. You won't find anyone who disputes that. The best batch of Sensetias ever? I will dispute that. I have seen the best Sensetia ever. It was made in a lab by a certain adorable little sucrose. Who I guess effectively injected it with a whole bunch of sucrose. I think that was the whole thing. It was like extra sweet or something. I accidentally dropped one into a well, and even the water turned sweet. 
Even so... <laughs> all right, all right. I'll let you in on a little secret. The boss of Second Life also wants to buy from me, but I haven't responded yet. Don't fall for this, Bolai. It is a classic negotiating tactic. If you won't take him, I'll just have to partner with them instead. And neither of us wants that. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, well, when you put it that way, I'll accept your asking price. I'll take all your stock. Don't sell a single one to Second Life. <laughs> Play like a sucker, boy. Oh, what are you doing here? Should have asked for a sample of one of the Sensetias. Prove it's extra sweet or something. And to be clear, these Sunsetias are mine. <laughs> I got course. to them first. Don't get any ideas. I have far too many Sunsetias, Well, I don't worry. I'm good. Knock yourself out. I've got more than enough in my bag. Actually, we want to ask you about a guy called Jury. Have you heard of him before? Jury? Yes, he's quite well known. Oh, excellent. And what do you know about him? I've heard a story about him. They say he was born into poverty. His parents died when he was young, and he was treated cruelly by the local community. Hmm. Interesting. Why the why would they treat him cruelly, I wonder? Just because he was uh, an impoverished young man? One of his neighbors was terribly rude to him all the time, but Jury never retaliated. Hmm. And when his neighbor went bankrupt, he even helped support the family. Damn. He's unbelievably kind. As in, I have a very hard time believing that's not a, that, that that's the full story. I mean, it's possible. But that's like one in a million people who are that uh that good. Well, if it was just rude, I suppose that's one thing. He returned cruelty with kindness, oh, injustice with peace offerings. But now this sounds too much like a gentleman of talent and character. And uh, oh, how did I not notice him sooner? In fact, maybe I'm not too late. If I could hire him to be the brand ambassador for Wanyo Boutique. <laughs> of course, but no, it's uh, he seems almost too good. I would like to believe in him, but that's uh. He's just... I mean, this is only one source, of course, but... Oh, he sounds like a decent man. Sounds inhuman. I can finally breathe a sigh of relief. The Paimon, this is just one other source. That is bad intelligence work. Why are you asking about him anyway? Uh, you aren't uh, looking for a brand ambassador too, are you? Not quite. Well then, in that case, the higher bidder takes the... Hmm? Ah. That's Jerry right over there. Oh, good. Why don't we go and talk to him? No, 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 no. Where? Where? It's him, all right. Looks Who's like he's he, chatting yeah. with Lean Long. Come on, let's follow them. I, and I don't know who that is, but yeah, this is this is more like it. Let's uh, let's tail him and see if his personality changes or anything. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. Right. I'll just go and fetch an employment contract. And hey, don't try and cut me out of this. <laughs> hey! Boy, like, well, he's not gonna work for you, dude. He's got his sights set higher. I understand. Let's walk and talk. Ooh. What are you talking about, though? You're looking to buy a wineware set? Wineware? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? Hmm. Connoisseur of fine wines? The truth is, an old friend of mine who likes to have a drink now and then, he hmm. fancies himself as a man of culture, but doesn't care for needless extravagance. So I thought I might buy him a set of high-quality fakes. How very thoughtful <laughs> of you. Leave it to me, then. Come and collect it at Shigu Antiques whenever is convenient. That seems good. 
And very kind of you. Thank you very much, Miss Lean Long. Yeah, he just seems like a good it's guy. It's my pleasure, Mr. Jerry. These days, it's quite rare for someone of your standing to still keep up with their old friends. It's nice to see. It is. I'll be sure to pick out a good set for you. You can count on me. Giving a uh, good friend some nice replicas. Hmm. Jerry seems to get along really well with everyone. He does. Are you satisfied now, Yelan? Seems like everyone thinks Jerry is a great guy. Which is kind of why I'm really expecting some shoe to drop somewhere at some time. We shouldn't jump to conclusions just yet. Let's go check out the wharf where he usually goes fishing. You don't want to keep following him. Uh, do we have to? Well, you don't. I'm on. You don't like the wharf or something? Wait. Just trying to dig up some dirt on Jiri because you want to be Tianchu yourself, <laughs> are you? I mean, she might, but she'll be fair, I think. And we're here to keep her honest. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But hey, if I do become Tianchu, I'll look out for you guys. Aw. I mean, you need to be assessed too, though, Yalen. I trust your skills. But it is also true, your skills are, uh... In a very specific field. I'm not sure if you are uh, suited for policy making or not. You'll be able to try all the finest food for free. How does that sound? Ooh, bribery. We will? Well, come on! Up this is this is. We go! <laughs> Me and Pine One is sold. Now, do they normally go fishing on the wharf? Just like on the dock, or do they get on a boat and go fishing? The wharf is as busy as ever. Of course. I hear the anglers here sometimes sell their fish to the nearby fishmongers. Hmm. Well, let's see what Uncle Soon has to say. Of course, of course. Who we'll see him regularly. Well, Hello there. What would you like to buy today? Well, we're here to buy some information. Sorry to interrupt. We're actually members of the uh, Liyue Anglers Association, <laughs> and we just wanted to ask a few questions about someone. You didn't uh, come up with that cover story beforehand, did you, uh, Yalen? We've heard about this young man called Jur Yi, who's supposed to be a fantastic fisherman. Just wondering if you happen to have heard of him? I'm on. First of all, shush. Not in front of the guy we're making up a fake identity in front of. And second, she did bat a single eyelid. She had a briefest moment of hesitation. Ah, yes, Jury. He's been making quite a name for himself recently. I've got some friends who travel all over the place, and they tell me everywhere they go, they meet someone who's heard of him. Huh. He did say he's traveled a lot. Hmm. Apparently, he had a rather tough time growing up. Had to work several jobs alongside his studies to make ends meet. Yeah, we've heard that. How does that saying go? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, if there's anything to that logic, he's sure to be phenomenally successful one day. He very well might be, if uh, this investigation goes through well. Yeah, we think so too. <laughs> but I'm afraid your Anglers Association might be in for a disappointment. Oh? Oh? Why is that? Not a good fisher. He is good at a lot of things, but fishing isn't <laughs> one of them. Yeah. He fishes at the wharf and sells what he catches to me on occasion. His catches are always mediocre. Not terrible, but equally nothing to write home about. I mean, if yeah. If you're looking to recruit some new members, though, I do know a few top anglers I could put you in touch with. Yeah. Uh, luckily for him, being a good fisherman is not a requirement for the job of Tian Shu. That sounds fantastic. I've got a couple of other things to attend to right now, though, so why don't I come back some other time and we can chat over a drink? You're not going to come back some other time for a drink, are you, Yalen? Sure thing. See you. Everywhere they go, they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, let's keep asking around. I mean, like, yeah. 
He's uh, very popular. He um, travels a lot. I'll talk to Uncle Gal. Here to buy some fish? It's 300 for one or three for 1,000. Uh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. 300 for one or three for 1,000? I don't like the way you worded that. Um, but also, the number is... That, that's not a good deal. That's the opposite of a good deal. You better hurry. When they're gone, they're gone. I'll just buy one three times and I'll get a better price. Hello. We're from the Society for Fish Price Research. We'd just like to ask a few questions. This is... You really need to come up with this before you step up so you don't sound so, uh... Like you're making it up, Yalen. Identity again. I'm on, but not out loud in front of the guy. Society for Fish Price Research. Uh, I haven't done anything illegal. Stay out of my business. <laughs> Suspicious. Please, don't worry. We're just here to conduct a simple survey. We've heard about a certain Jur E who's been selling fresh fish at low prices in this area recently. Do you know anything about this? So this isn't about me. You should have said something, you know. <sighs> I know the guy. I can tell you what I know. You definitely are doing something shady, Uncle Gal. And based off of that deal, I mean, yeah, that's a very shady deal. You you, you do realize typically when you sell something, you know, the, the one for this amount, three for this amount, usually the buying more results in a lower price, not a higher price, right? I haven't heard anything about him selling fresh fish at low prices, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was him. Oh? Why is that? Is he a good guy? Because he's so poor. His parents died when he was a very young, and his alcoholic father still owed a huge amount of debt. Mm. No one wanted anything to do with him. I see, I see. He was still a kid when he first came to the wharf. His clothes were ragged, and he had a bandage wrapped around his head. Oof. And he managed to survive, thanks to Uncle Tien, who gave him some food. But still to this day, he doesn't have a lot of mora to his name. Right. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing either. I mean, he can afford to eat and everything, but you'll often see him haggling with others over just a few mora. So, I wouldn't be surprised to find out he's been selling a few fish. Hmm. It's not like he catches much anyway, so it's not going to affect my business. Uh, uh, don't, don't tell him I said that. <laughs> don't worry, we won't. You'd rather he didn't know? Well, I spoke to him once briefly, and I just had a feeling that he really cares what other people think of him. Hmm. I think he has pretty low self-esteem, but hey, it's hardly my place to say anything. What he's achieved already puts most people to shame. Hmm, interesting. Low self-esteem, huh? But nobody's perfect. I just wouldn't want to upset him. That's all. I see. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Elan, don't go out of your way to upset him, please, just to see how he reacts. Not a problem. And just for the record, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the price of my fish. You saying that repeatedly and getting all defensive really makes you extremely suspicious, Uncle Gal. The more times you say it, the less convincing it becomes. Thank you, Paimon. <laughs> mm, doesn't have a lot of Mora to his name. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah. I mean, there is one possible troublesome avenue there if he was in debt. That's a, you know, point of leverage that can be used to exploit him later down the line. Consideration. Hey, it's you guys. Wait, Hello. What's the phrase? Oh yeah. Honored to meet you. <laughs> Thank you, Dugu. What brings you to me? Uh, questions. The truth is, we are but newcomers to this territory. We heard tell of a great martial artist, Master Dugu, <laughs> who knows everything there is to know. Hence, we sought you out to ask for your guidance. Of course, of course. Master Dugu, please let us know 
your secrets. <gasps> really? People said I know everything there is to know? Of course. But of course. We also heard that Master Dugu is a kind and virtuous swordsman who never <laughs> turns away anyone who comes with questions. <gasps> yeah. Great. Uh -uh. So what do you wish to know? Nothing happens on this street that I don't know about. That's true. If you want to know what's happening on the streets, talk to the, uh, well, the urchins. Uh, now she's lying to a kid. <laughs> I'm on. This seems to have made his day. It's just a little white lie. So, Master Dugu, have you heard of one by the name of jur -E? Actually, he might not be an urchin. He could just be a kid working at the wharf. Sure have. You mean that guy that all the grown-ups are talking about these days? That's the one. Probably. I've heard many tales of jury. For example, um, uh, <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, Dugu. I don't want tales, though. I want to know what your personal observations have been. Probably because it's nothing that important. I prefer stories about sword fighting heroes. <laughs> of course. Oh, I can completely understand that. Then let me ask you this. Do you remember roughly when the grown-ups started talking about jur -E? Oh, good question, Yalen. Oh, yeah, I know that. It was about two or three months ago. Really? Only two or three months? Huh. Before that, people always used to talk about jur -E in a kind of nasty tone of voice. Mm. But two or three months ago, suddenly everyone started to like them. Interesting. That recently. Sometimes he gives me candies, so I'm glad that people are starting to like him now. <laughs> I want. Why? I, I. That's what I really want to know: is why were people nasty to him before? Just as I thought. Huh? What do you mean? Two or three months when he's became a potential candidate for uh, Tianshu. I mean. Just as I thought, Master Dugu is indeed as kind and virtuous as the legends claim. <laughs> I'm not that great. <laughs> of course you are. Look at you, Master Sword Fighter Dugu. Hell, you might give Singcho a run for his money. Oh, yeah. One other thing. These days, there's a lot of people I've never seen before talking about jury stories in the street. They seem like nice people. Hmm. Oh. Definitely. Great. So next time I see them, I'll say hi. And I guess I can share some of my candies with them, too. That's a good, good, good kid, Dugu. Certainly. You can also tell my friend in Yenshang Tea House about what they're up to. I'm sure my friend would also like to say hi to them. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> it's ominous. You're welcome. Well, then. Fare thee well, Master Dugu. <laughs> Fare thee well, Master Dugu. Until we meet again. Enjoy. <laughs> He's adorable. Any of that sounds strange to you? Yeah, I heard it. Strange? What was strange about it? Juyu seems to have a great reputation. Uncle Soon and Uncle Gas spoke highly of him, and Dugu Shuo seems to like him too. Yeah, but Paimon, that two to three months ago. True. But the issue is, where did his sudden celebrity come from? Yeah. It almost seems too good to be true. That's the thing. It a sudden shift from nasty to loving. It's too much of a shift. Sudden? Too good to be true? What do you mean? So he returns cruelty with kindness and had to work to support his studies. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that make someone well-known in their hometown. But Uncle Soon said even his friends who travel far and wide hear about him wherever they go. That's a little over the top, if you ask me. It is a little over the top, yeah. Do you remember what Dugu Shuo said about jur -E stories? Clearly, they left him with a good impression of the guy. But beyond that, he wasn't interested in the details. That's the reaction I would expect from any normal person. Right. Yeah, two to three months is uh, far too soon to have a shift like that and be far and wide. Plus, there's the fact that all this praise of Jur-E has only been happening within the last two or three months. 
I mean, you don't think they're being paid off, do you? His childhood, his studies, the thing with his neighbor. None of these are recent events. So why are these stories only going around now? I mean, someone could be seeding them. When you put it like that, it is kind of strange. Of course, if that's all there was to it, I wouldn't look into it any further. Jur E was born into a poor family. Paying people to get his stories out there is within the rules of the game, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> sure. The problem is, do you remember what Uncle Gao said about him? Yeah. He's stayed poor his whole life. Right. Everything he's earned, he's either spent on studying, traveling, or paying off debts. I don't think he has the mora to pay for a publicity campaign. Yeah, I had that thought too. Um, someone's helping him. He's working with someone. I mean, Uncle Tien could easily seed these stories, and with how beloved he is, they would probably catch on. Right, and that changes everything. It could mean a powerful faction is trying to gain influence over the Liu Ad Shixing. Which we don't want, yeah. That's the worst case scenario. But all too often, the most pessimistic speculation turns out to be closest to the truth. It's kick can. It doesn't necessarily, though. Someone's trying to gain influence over the Qixing? That sounds serious. What should we do? Well, we shouldn't jump to conclusions, Paimon. We should keep investigating to, you know, try to verify whether that's true or not. Even if we ask Juri about it, surely there's no way he'd admit it. First, we need to find out who's supporting him. Don't worry, I've got a plan. <laughs> Do tell. Remember the current affairs and planning stage of the assessment? Yeah. Since the successful candidate is duty-bound to implement their plan after taking office, their manifesto tells us their stance on key issues. Right. You think that uh, we can look for who his manifesto might most benefit? Whoever is secretly helping Jur E must be seeking to benefit from his actions after his appointment. So, we should be able to find some hints in Jur E's manifesto on who we're dealing with. It's possible, assuming this is actually the truth. Come on, let's get back to Yen Shang Tea House. Hey there. Oh, Tian's gone. Jur E's manifesto covers a huge range of topics. Looking for details that don't add up? It'll be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Right. Yeah, this... Hmm. This is gonna take all night at least. I'll divide the reports into two piles. You take one, I'll take the other. When we're finished, we'll put our heads together. Of course. Officially, the assessment is already over, and I'll be expected to announce the results before long. So we have to get to the bottom of this as quickly as we can. Of course, of course. Yikes! We better hurry! I'm still hoping that, uh... He's a good guy. I like him. At least I like who he presents himself as. Whatever else Uncle Tian might think of Jur E, the fact remains that he's one of his favorite students. Right. Any evidence he's left is not going to be immediately obvious. We'll have to look carefully and think critically. Made any discoveries? Not yet. Not so far, but we're still looking. By that, we haven't actually started looking yet. Sorry. All right, what do we got? Huh. Even though Yelan took half, this is still a lot to get through. Yes, it is. Better buckle down, Paimon. It's, you know, going to take a long time. Maybe we should get some tea. Well, we got to start somewhere. The all night. Well, let's read Chapter C. Due to a variety of factors, sea storms have become stronger in recent years. I suggest we set up a special patrol unit to deal with sea monsters. The fleet should consist of the following. And that seems reasonable. Covers various issues related to coastal defense. Okay. How about rock? Much of Liyue's folklore suggests that Rex Lapis left a great deal of wealth in the mountains of Liyue. However, due to obstacles hindering the excavation operation at the chas Chasm, many projects have been called off. 
The workers of the Black Cliff Forge have been idle near the Golden House for a long time now. They should be given first refusal if any suitable projects arise. Seems fair. Covers mining, tunnel construction, and ruin exploration. And then roads. The treacherous terrain around Huaguang Stone Forest and Qingyun Peak means the area has weak transport links. The sheer mountain peaks are connected by only by rope bridges. Yeah, very unsafe. They are dangerous to walk on and wholly unsuited to the transportation of goods. Granted, do goods need to be transported around there? These areas are rich in medicinal herbs and ore deposits. Well, fair enough. Building a road network around the mountains would be beneficial for everyone. Covers plans to build roads and bridges. I mean, all that seems reasonable. Oh, this reading is giving Paimon a headache. Need to, need to take a break, Paimon. Uh, let's take a break. Of course. <laughs> uh, looks like I'm the first one back, as usual. Hit. <laughs> I forget who you're investigating, Shangwa. Oh, hey! It's one of Yeon's little helpers! Shangwa! <laughs> one of her little helpers. <laughs> Paimon. If you're back, that means. That means you finished investigating Chenwei, right? Oh, him? Yeah. You betcha. I visited all the commerce guilds and gathered a wealth of information. Every time they asked me to leave, but I always had another trick up my sleeve. <laughs> Don't drag this out. Just tell us your findings. Yeah. Yes, Lady Elon. To summarize my findings, most people who've had interactions with Qianwei will start out complaining about how proud and arrogant he is, but then go on to give a generally positive appraisal of him. Hmm. The young master of the Feiyun Commerce Guild said that Qianwei appears arrogant, but he's very scrupulous in the way he works. Well, that's good. That is better. Once he signs a contract with somebody, he treats them fairly, regardless of their background. I'm sure Zhang Li would like that. Who'd have thought? <laughs> oh, just because someone has a terrible personality doesn't mean they're necessarily a bad person. Is it possible that his reputation is fake? Is there any way you can check the accounts of the businesses under his name? In theory, that should be very difficult. But here's the thing. I asked around and found out that almost all of Qianwei's accounts are open to the public. Mm. Where he buys from and sells to should be confidential business information, but he doesn't seem interested in protecting it at all. Interesting. Qianwei often sees business opportunities that others don't, but once he's made enough mora off of it, it's like he gets sick of it and releases all of his trade secrets. Interesting. Huh. It's like he wants people to know that they still can't beat him, even if he shares all of his <laughs> secrets. The fact that someone like that can still make Mora is pretty infuriating when you think about it. It's, uh, it's interesting. I mean, he sounds like an excellent businessman. Of course, that is far from the only thing or even the most important thing when it comes to the position of Tianxu, I think, who's policy proposals will influence every aspect of Liyue. What a strange guy. It's like he's not doing business to make Mora, but instead... To validate his theories. Hmm. No wonder his manifesto contains so many insights. It's all the result of his first-hand experimentation. Interesting. I'm back! Huh? Ah, uh, how come you're here? We beat you. Why do you think? Obviously, because I possess superior skills <laughs> and am always one step ahead of the competition. <laughs> well, uh, when you're the competition, at least. Oof. These guys have quite the rivalry, don't they? You. Ugh, whatever. I'm not getting into an argument with you. If I hadn't had something else to take care of on the way, I would have been back long before you. Lady Yelan, I have finished investigating Mingbua. Okay, and. Well. We're all ears. The Ministry of Civil Affairs says that Mingbua struggles to get his words out when he gets nervous, especially when he's chatting with strangers. Right. But after a few days of getting to know him, 
you can pretty much have a normal conversation with him. That's good. On the whole, the feedback from the Ministry of Civil Affairs was very positive. He always considers the things that everyone else overlooks. That's 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 really nice. I still argue that taking a few days of getting to know him is a strong weakness for uh, this kind of position. Same with the uh, initial abrasiveness of, uh, uh, was it Chinway? In your opinion, was the Ministry of Civil Affairs appraisal of Mingbo at all exaggerated? I don't believe so. Mingbo is someone who has slowly but surely earned the reputation he has today. That's excellent. Once again, though, makes him great in his current position. Does not necessarily mean he'll make a good Tianchu. According to Miss Yu, the Ministry often gets Mingbo to take a final look at projects before they're implemented. People feel much more confident in something if it has his stamp of approval. That might be good. If that's the kind of feedback he typically gives. Oh, and also, there was once someone in the ministry who was lying and cheating to try to advance their career. Mingbo gave them the scolding of a lifetime. <laughs> Apparently, he can be terrifying when he loses his temper. Ooh. I haven't seen it for myself, though. So he has integrity. That's also excellent. Whoa. That's hard to imagine. Like I said before, things are not always as they appear. Well, yeah, but appearances are still exceedingly important, though, Yelan. Ah, so that's what you meant by that. Paimon's starting to get it now. Like, uh, how they interact with people are, is going to be very important. Maybe me? I mean, well, maybe the Tian Show doesn't have quite a public-facing position. Or the Tenshu. I'm not sure. If they're only working with people they work with, you know, regularly... It might be less of an issue for someone like Mingbo. Or even, uh, Mr. Wei. Thank you both. You're free to go now. But, um... So, have you finished reading the manifesto? Oh, we read those three chapters. We still have a bit left. <laughs> <laughs> Finish reading the manifesto with Yelin. Hmm, I can't see any immediate problems looking at the individual entries. Yeah, I didn't see any problems either. The only one that strikes me as a little unusual is the Chengshu Pool Redevelopment Plan. Is that the one that looks kind of pretty, that has a nice overlook vista? What's that? Chengshu Pool has always been home to many secrets. Plus, Ejdaha once wrought havoc there, so mm. there are even more secrets buried deep underground. Cool. It was nice to see Ejdaha name dropped. At some point, a rumor began to go around that there is great treasure buried beneath Chiangshu Pool. Hmm. A long time ago, with the approval of the Qixing, a mining team conducted an exploratory excavation there. And what did they find? So, did they find any treasure? None. The ruin was completely impenetrable. The only way they could have gotten through the solid rock would have been by blowing it open with a special kind of explosive. I see. And they didn't want to do that for, what, uh, cultural preservation region, uh, reasons, or...? The technology wasn't mature enough at that time. Oh. So the excavation project was shut down and the treasure became a mere legend. But the technology now is mature enough so this project could be reopened? Jur E's manifesto focuses on solving problems. And this treasure hunt seems extremely risky. It seems out of step with the rest of his plans. In what way is it risky? What's the risk? Still, this one fact alone doesn't tell us much. Everyone wants to get their hands on this treasure. The treasure hoarders, the Fatui, even local Liyue factions. Right. And the Chi, uh, the Chi Xing. <laughs> Did you find anything? Really, no. Excavation? Project? Treasure? Did we read anything similar in our half of the manifesto? I mean, I guess it's related in a sort of genre kind of way. The Black Cliff Forge. It's not really suspicious, though, unless I'm missing something. Oh, yeah! Juryi said the Black Cliff Forge workers should get right a first refusal if any suitable projects come up. What did his father do? His family? Did he now? 
Well, that makes everything much clearer. So Jur Yi wants the Black Cliff Forge to excavate the treasure of Qian Shu Pool. Okay. Does that mean the Black Cliff Forge is Jur Yi's secret supporter? Maybe. No, not likely. I've looked into the Black Cliff Forge before. They aren't involved with any powerful factions at present. Hmm. What about personal motivation, though, Yalen? They do possess some specialized explosives, but it would seem more trouble than it's worth to put so many resources into a risky project like this. You just mean risky in that it's not guaranteed to turn something valuable up, or...? Still, since the clues are pointing toward the Black Cliff Forge, we should see where they lead. We may well find something new. We might. All right. Chimley and Mingboard both turned out to be completely different than what we thought. Well, no. What about Jiri? Yi? Is there another side to him too? I don't think they turned out to be completely different than we thought, Paimon. It's just that people are compl are you know complex, and you know the, the, the initial impressions they gave are still accurate. It's just you know when you have extended interactions with them, they have uh, deeper personalities, as everyone does. Um, it doesn't change the fact that Mr. Wei will, uh, be extremely abrasive to anyone he meets, and is a bit of an asshole. But, I mean, he, even then, he seemed like a knowledgeable guy. And then, same deal with Mingbo. He's still extremely timid, but the fact that he can eventually get over that with people he knows is fine, but it doesn't change the fact that he's going to be initially timid with people. Which might be an issue for someone like Tian Shu. I don't really know enough about the position to say for sure. But I think this is a good place to end, and we'll continue on to the Black Cliff, Black Cliff Forge next time. <laughs>